This is day two at Rio de Janeiro, site of the UNR Summit. I'm Craig Rucker, Executive Director of the Committee for a Constructive Tomorrow, and if you caught our video yesterday, you would have seen some pretty crazy things coming out of the mouths of some of the delegates here in attendance. Today, we sent around one of our crack collegian staffers, Abdul Kamara, to attend some meetings and find out a little bit more about what these radicals have in the future they want for us. What did you find out, Abdul? Well, Craig, uh, as usual, the left is up to their same old antics. The whole idea that government needs to be expanded, central planning, and most importantly, that socialism needs to be reintegrated. So pretty much at the end of the day, you're going to see it's the same old dog doing the same old tricks when it comes to sustainability. You'll just have to watch and see exactly what they said. Well, let's take a look at this video. The situation in which we are today in terms of unemployment and precarious work is terrible. I mean, we have more than 70% of the population around the world that has no formal labor relationship. Why not considering the options of using the money you spend on building highways, which really benefits to a large extent at the car owners? Why not using the same amount of money to support the construction of public transport? We need progressive taxation, transfers, social protection policies, um, as these, these have been proven to reduce income uh, inequities within countries. of how one species changed a planet. The latest chapter of our story begins in England 250 years ago. Fueled by coal, then oil, several brilliant inventions appeared. They ignited the Industrial Revolution, which spread like wildfire through Europe, North America, Japan, then elsewhere. The great railways, then cars and highways, connected people across the globe. Medical discoveries saved millions of lives. New artificial fertilizers meant we could feed more people. Population rose rapidly. But this was nothing compared with what was to come. The 1950s marked the beginning of the Great Acceleration. Globalization, marketing, tourism, and huge investments helped fuel enormous growth. People swarmed to cities, which became even more powerful engines of creativity. In a single lifetime, the well-being of millions has improved beyond measure. Health, wealth, security, longevity, never have so many had so much. Yet one billion are malnourished. In a single lifetime, we have grown into a phenomenal global force. We move more sediment and rock annually than all natural processes, such as erosion and rivers, such as erosion and rivers. We manage three quarters of all land outside the ice sheets. Greenhouse gas levels this high have not been seen for over one million years. Temperatures are increasing. We have made a hole in the ozone layer. 
we are losing biodiversity. Many of the world's deltas are sinking due to damming, mining and other causes. Sea level is rising. Ocean acidification is a real threat. We are altering Earth's natural cycles. We have entered the Anthropocene, a new geological epoch dominated by humanity. This relentless pressure on our planet risks unprecedented destabilization. But our creativity, energy and industry offer hope. We have shaped our past. We are shaping our present. We can shape our future. You and I are part of this story. We are the first generation to realize this new responsibility. As the population grows to 9 billion, we must find a safe operating space for humanity, for the sake of future generations. Welcome to the Anthropocene. Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two. We're going to go through eugenics and stuff like that. Uh, who declares American weight problem draining world's resources? Researchers at the BMC Public Health have published a study regarding the increasing levels of fatness worldwide and the impact such weight gain has on our global resources. They contend that overweight people are likening, likening to an extra billion humans born on the planet. So a professor from the Martin School at the University of Oxford says the overall message is that we need a renewed focus on both population and consumption. It's not enough to look at uh, one and or the other. It says we need to look at both. It says here that because together they determine the footprint on the world. And um, remember the rights of the Mother Earth, right? Just remember that for when we get to it in the future here in this video. Uh, Ban Ki-moon declares model of consumption dead and visions world of forced environmental labor. So the UN Secretary Ban Ki-moon has written a guest piece for Der Spiegel and it declares that consumption is dead and that the new economic model is needed for the planet, so zero economic growth. For too long we have been trying to secure the path to prosperity with increased consumption. This model is dead. In Rio we have to develop a new model for an economic system of the 21st century. Uh, one that refutes the myth that there has to be a zero-sum balance between growth and environment. Using intelligent measures, governments can create growth, fight poverty, create jobs, and accelerate social progress while at the same time conserve the nature, or sorry, the natural and limited resources of the planet. This is from January 10th, 2012. Leaked document reveals Rio plus 20 sustainable development goals promised to build green economies at this uh, summer's Earth sentiment. And I found this instead, it says here, unlike the 92 summit, uh, where basically they were trying to get legally binding environmental agreements, it said instead this time they will be asked to set their own targets and work voluntarily towards establishing a global green economy, which the United Nation believes will reduce poverty and slow consumption. Then we have this photo, uh, thousands of women march during a demonstration against green capitalism and violence against women in downtown Rio de Janeiro in the sidelines of the UN Conference on Sustainable Development. We have globalists switching gears as the Royal Society lecturer says CO2 is not affecting the Earth's temperature. So he was on the Sustainability Advisory Board and his position on man-made climate change is now uh, being reassessed. Then I saw this article, the transatlantic jet trails visible from space, how contrails can stay in the sky for up to 14 hours. So this is just a pure crap, bullshit, disinformation piece where they keep calling them contrails. We're talking about, of course, chemtrails. Um, I like to just refer to them as aerosol springs, weather modification, geoengineering. Um, but they're going to go ahead, of course, this is part of the Rio summit. Um, a lot of propaganda out there. Uh, uh, basically saying you got to blame it on man. So this is all man's fault, right? But it is partly um, not man's fault because, I, like I said before, I personally think that these uh, aerosol sprayers, these planes, these gutted out, remodified, or modified 747s, whatever they are, they're probably being uh, carried out by drones, by basically computers. So automated planes just spraying. And, uh, you know, some of us have seen on the... Uh, just online you can go to websites and actually look at the images that are being posted and you can you know sure as hell that these are not just contrails there's a pattern to it you can see all the different uh, harp rings and scalar squares being pulsed into the atmosphere into the chemicals that they're spreading not uh, contrails 
Then we have U.S. climate change procedure based on UN's geoengineering governance and technology policy. Use of geoengineering is supported by the members of the scientific community that is working in line with climate change alarmists. He says here that these weather modification uh, policies extend to plate tectonics, ocean fertilization, I've covered many of them, including cloud seeding especially. Project Cirrus, or PC, was conducted by the U.S. government between 62 and 83 in an attempt to manipulate the weather by affecting hurricane behavior. That's funny, they, they called it um, Project Cirrus, right? Because all these clouds are supposedly cirrus clouds in here, right? Forming an X-page, uh, X-shaped pattern, right? And it says here that um, it was headed by the Project uh, Cirrus was headed by General Electric, the U.S. Army, Signal Corps, and the Office of Naval Research, and the U.S. Air Force. The GAO concluded that the climate engineering technologies do not offer, or yeah, do not now offer a viable response to global climate change. Areas of study were carbon dioxide removal and solar radiation management. It says here that the solar radiation management, a technique for blocking the sun's light in order to prevent excess uh, heat, from affecting the Earth's surface has been used in many countries, including the U.S., Brazil, Costa Rica, England, most European countries. It says here these uh, consist of mostly spraying crystals and toxic chemicals such as sulfite aerosols and bury them into the upper atmosphere. Uh, Dr. Uh, Perlingeri, I can't pronounce that, but environmental writer and former university professor and scholar states, quote, for more than a decade, the U.S. and Canada's, uh, or Canada's citizens have been subjected to a 24-7, 365-day-a-year uh, aerosol assault over our heads made by a toxic brew of poisonous heavy metals, chemicals, and other dangerous ingredients. Now, this was reported by the mainstream media. The U.S. Department of Defense and military have been systematically blanketing all of our skies with what are known as chemtrails, also known as stratospheric aerosol geoengineering. So one thing to note, like I said earlier in the video, is that if the United Nations and that do uh, create some kind of rights for the quote Mother Earth, like they really care about her, is what? Is that we can use that against them and say, well, you're spraying chemicals in the atmosphere and nanoparticles and pulse and frequencies and everything else creating earthquakes. So. I mean, I think that's a uh, that's a pretty big right infringement against uh, the Earth if they're going to play it like that, right? We have this, the invisible threat that pulls apart DNA causing genetic disorders and cancer. It says here, we're all exposed to electromagnetic radiation constantly on a daily basis from mobile phones, Wi-Fi hotspots, power lines, electrical appliances. The sources of this pollution are many and varied, each having its own range of wavelength, frequencies, and intensity. So... So scientists are aware that uh, heating of the brain occurs while using mobile phones, but they also found that the external ribbons of the DNA structure are rotated and pulled. Basically, DNA is damaged by EM radiation. And we've seen the story about London and the Olympics and how it's going to be a, a Wi-Fi city, right? Free Wi-Fi for everybody in the city because it'll be everywhere. Two-thirds of young Brits check Facebook and Twitter every day on their mobiles, making us the most connected nationality on the planet or the most radiated and tracked and sterile probably too but that's okay because it's all about negative or zero growth and sustainability and population uh, and austerity so top doctors chilling claim that NHS in the UK kills off 130,000 elderly patients every year using the death pathway then we have this prescription painkillers overtake car crashes as leading cause of accidental death in America so and what are the what are the tests uh, that, that we're going to have right um, for, you know, say DUIs and stuff like that. Are they going to start testing for prescription drugs? Well, maybe eventually they'll just start taking your blood on the spot. Well, they're kind of already doing that. Oh, well, it's just conspiracy theory. It's not going to happen. Autism could be triggered by very low doses of antidepressants or other chemicals found in the water supply. They're talking about pharmaceutical drugs in the water supply. They found them. The EPA did, and there's lots of them. No way to remove them. And then a foreign company here, Boots, set to be taken over by U.S. giant Walgreens. The company tends to create the first global pharmacy, so great. And another way to keep the numbers at a uh, sustainable rate is what? Uh, HIV scare at First Nations school after botched diabetes tests. That's right, high schools are being tested for HIV and hepatitis after undergoing a faulty diabetes screening. Mm, fa it says here, uh, HIV tainted blood donations double in 2011. But the future of sustainability, like I said before, is based off your blood or your carbon footprint. Your six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. Your 666. So what's your carbon footprint?